I'm Lauren Steffi, business columnist for the Houston Chronicle, and I'm also the author of Drowning in Oil, BP and the Reckless Pursuit of Profit. I first became interested in the BP story about five years ago uh, after the deadly explosion at their Texas City refinery in 2005 that killed about 15 people and injured at least 170 others. And from that accident, we began looking back at some of the other safety issues that were going on within the company. For several years, I had actually very good access to BP executives. I interviewed Tony Hayward three times. I interviewed Bob Malone, who was head of BP America on numerous occasions. I toured their Thunder Horse facility. John Brown became CEO of BP in 1995, and he really set the company on a course uh, to become one of the biggest oil companies in the world. He wanted to take what had been kind of a stuffy, government-run enterprise and, and expand it to the point that it would rival Exxon as, as one of the world's largest oil companies. Now, Brown was able to really grow BP into to quite a large company, mostly through mergers and acquisitions, primarily here in the U.S. Uh, but as often happens with mergers, he failed to, to pay attention to a lot of the details, the operating integrations, and that's where, when he, when he would demand cost cuts, you would see corners wind up being cut. When you look at the problems, the pipeline leaks in Alaska, the Texas City explosion, even the problems with the Thunder Horse platform initially, uh, what you see is a, is a culture of cutting corners, but it's a, it's a very subtle culture. If you talk to people with inside BP, they'll tell you, nobody ever says, we need you to cut corners on safety. But that's the end result of the overall budget constraints that most of the operating divisions are put in. They didn't monitor the, the way individual decisions might compound to result in disaster. It's something known as process safety. And when you look at other oil companies, that's one of the things they really stress, they put a, a big emphasis on, and that emphasis was really lacking at BP. I would like to think that the culture of BP will change, but they've had an awful lot of warning signs that haven't been heeded up to now. Their new CEO, Bob Dudley, is also an insider, so I'm not sure that he's gonna really bring the fresh perspective that's needed. Uh, the industry likes to talk about its safety record in the Gulf, but when you look at the history of BP, this spill is really in context. Uh, it really follows their other operating disasters of the past 10 years. You know, I think it's important to remember that these types of accidents have a profound impact on the families. Uh, you know, many of them have lost loved ones, fathers, brothers, sisters, mothers. In some cases, people are still struggling. They're, they're still having health problems. In some cases, their lives will never be the same. I'd like readers to come away from this book with a deeper understanding, not just of BP, but of this, this issue of process safety, of how seemingly innocent decisions can build up to catastrophe without uh, proper monitoring. The largest misconception about this spill is that it, it was a one-off, that this was something unusual. Uh, the industry likes to talk about its safety record in the Gulf, but when you look at the history of BP, this spill is really in context. Uh, it really follows their other operating disasters of the past 10 years.